Hey everybody, for those of you that don't know, my name's Hoopy, and the day has finally came to take the dozer and put her in the garage again. So for anybody that's a subscriber to my channel, you'll know that I've been running this dozer with only uh, the left steering brake. The right one is wore out, so it's time to put it in the garage and get that changed out. Uh, I got to do a couple things before I can do that. I spooned out the tracks. I'm going to run it back and forth in the driveway, try to get some more mud off and pressure wash it. And the roll cage has to come off because it will not fit through the door of the garage. Well, she's all washed off. Um, now I'm gonna go ahead and get this roll cage off here and in the garage she goes. I ain't got nobody here to help me today. So I'm gonna make an attempt at getting this off by myself. I've done it before. Uh, it should turn out all right. Man, it's just a muddy mess. But the dozer's in here. So we can uh, start working on tearing her apart and getting her fixed. So before I can get started tearing into this thing, there's a couple things I've got to do. Uh, just in case I've got to pull this sprocket and stuff off, I need to jack the dozer up and roll my tracks around to where my master link is right in here. And this way, if I've got to split my track, I can do it because once I tear all this stuff off, I can't start the machine because the hydraulic pumps and stuff aren't going to have any oil going to them because um, the boxes aren't going to be here. So I've heard something about these old dozers, and if anybody knows it for sure, let me know in the comments. But one day we had a problem with the track. I had to do a video on uh, fixing the bent track frame. We had the track come off. And my father-in-law's brother told us, we didn't try this at the time because we didn't know it, but if you're out in the woods and you've got problems and you need to get this dozer picked up, that if you crib up underneath this winch real tight and then put your blade all the way down, it'll actually rock back onto that winch and pick that track up enough that you can, you know, with bars and whatever, maneuver it enough to get it back on. If anybody's ever done that, let me know. Put it in the comments. Tell me if that, that will work or if you've never heard of it, maybe that might save you one day. Right here's master link on this side. The easiest way is that I've figured out how to do this by myself. And right there is where I wanted it. I just put those little spray paint marks on there and I can run them around to where I need them. Hey, there's my other one right there. So the reason I need those there, so if I got to split these, I can get in here with a hammer and a punch and drive those pins out to undo the tracks. So I can put the dozer back down on the ground and I won't have to worry about that unless I absolutely need them. So, before I get too far into this, I'd like to go over this and note that this is a John Deere 450BC. And my understanding on that is what makes this a B slash C is it's a B because it has dry brakes and dry clutches, but it's a C because it has the shifters up here on the side and it has a turbo. So, it's a BC as to where the C has wet clutches and wet brakes and all this stuff or the straight b's my understanding was the shifter was still down here with the dry clutches dry brakes and no turbo if anybody knows for sure let me know in the comments that's just what i found online and i've figured out it's been going on about two years since we last had this apart and did all this stuff 
uh, we replaced the brakes and clutches and something happened with this side and the brakes wore out. Clutches are still good, everything. But so to get started diving into this, the seat's gotta come off and I believe both boxes have to come off before the fuel tank can. This way I can get down underneath here to access this panel. So the hydraulic fluid needs drained out of this one and it all needs unhooked. This has gotta come off. And what we did was there was enough hoses that we could actually spin this box around and set it right here. And we didn't have to completely disconnect all the hoses and everything. So that's what I'm gonna to try to do with this side. That side's easy enough, the battery's in there unhook the shifter linkages and it comes off. Well, basically what I came up with to catch this hydraulic fluid was I wasted about an entire can of brake cleaner to clean my oil drain pan out really good. And hopefully I can catch it in here so I can put it in a five gallon bucket and save it because this stuff isn't that cheap. And it's pretty new because it leaks a little bit so I add some to it all the time. So there's the reason I wanted to catch and save that. That's a five gallon bucket of hydraulic fluid. That's 80 bucks right there. Um, I'm all about saving money and catching that oil and keeping it is a good way to do it. Next on this dozer, on this particular one, um, underneath the seat here, I've got to disconnect these four lines that go over to this side of the dozer. This way I'll be able to swing this over. And there is one or two, there's two lines down here. There's a hard metal one right here. And behind it, there's a big one that goes into the big rubber one which is what feeds the hydraulics. So I've got to disconnect those six lines and unbolt this. And this piece will be free to move over here where I need it. This is probably going to be an epic fail, but I'm going to try it. I don't know how much of that you actually saw, but uh, that's how you do really dumb stuff when you're here completely by yourself. What I'm working with back here. So this box sat around here, twisted around like this. These here, I had to I had to get it up high enough to get it past these. That's what was going on. And those lines go under this. This pipe goes into that rubber hose right there. So we're in here now. Now I've got to get the other box and the fuel tank sat off and so i can get inside these plates down here not just these little ones these little ones are for adjustments i gotta get this whole big plate off to get down into the brake bands itself so i'm gonna work on getting the other box off it should be a lot easier and the fuel tank i'll probably just use the engine crane again and slide it underneath the back and pick it up off it should be pretty well empty i ran it really low on purpose lighter than that one because that one's got the control valve in it. This one still ain't light.
fuel tank off here. For it, it's pretty simple. There's a return line, and here's the feed line. It's got a going and off valve on it. Perfect. So as long as I won't have to pull the brake drums up out, which just to replace these bands, I shouldn't, but uh, unless there's an issue with that drum, then I'll have to split the track and stuff, and that's why I got everything prepped for that. But just to replace these bands, I shouldn't have to do that. But uh, my fuel tank and stuff, I'm good leaving it lay right there. I can work around this. Uh, this dozer, it, it don't look like much without everything on there. She, uh, she don't really look like much now. There all looks a little bit better. It's uh, way better than what it was. Next thing we gotta do, is yank these bolts. I'll probably pull the inspection cover and just look in here, look down on both of them and I can show you what's going on. So I went ahead and got these inspection covers pulled and you can see on this one how it's all real light, light gray colored. And that one's still nice and dark and clean. This one is covered in brake pad material because I think this one hung up on me. And as you can see, this one here, everything's all clean in here. I mean, there's still the green tape from the, whenever we replaced the clutches. So I'm gonna pop the big covers off and, or at least this one, I'm gonna pull it off here and I'll show you what we got going on. Before I yank this, to anyone, if you're pulling these, there is a little eyelet right here with a spring on it going down to that brake shoe. So you can't just rip this off here. If you're having trouble, you've got to kind of slide it around and reach in and unhook that spring before this cover will come off. Well, just upon a first glance here, I have a feeling I'm probably going to be pulling this drum out. Reason being, this is the metal strap of this pad, brake, brake band, and it's pretty well flush with the outside ring on that drum. Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm pretty positive it's not supposed to look like that. I'm gonna pull the other one, and we'll uh, we'll compare them here. That drum might be okay. Uh, I don't know. Anyhow, you can look in there and see that there's no no pad left whatsoever on that one. And then on this one here, you can see there's every bit of a quarter of an inch on this one. All right. After studying on this for a minute, I've got to at least get these brake shoes out of here. And you don't have to pull your drums to just change your shoes. You, you don't. It's a pain, but you, you can do it without it. And I happened to look over and notice that this brake shoe, see how the back of it's right there? And the front of it is clear up and around, and it's not even attached up in there. So that one is actually broke loose from the metal part. It's just sitting in there. I don't know what's holding it in there still, but that's not, I'm gonna change both of these. This, this is not right. Um, let me get a light and I'll show you more. Uh, see how the, ah, this is gonna be hard to do. So if you look right there, see where that pin goes through? That's the front of the shoe. And if you look, the pad, Continues on clear down and around. It's up against something. That's the only thing holding it in there. And there's no no shoe from there back on the drum. So that one's bad too. And that's what that one guy was telling me about these aftermarket brake shoes. Here's here's your example. I've talked about it in my other videos, and this is why they're trash. Don't use these aftermarket brake shoes. They're junk, clearly. I I don't I don't remember if I said this or not, but uh, the reason I'm saying all these things are junk, these aftermarket ones, is because I'm guessing 
this one did what that one did, except it kept on going and got wedged down in between. And that's what locked up and burnt the rest of this off. And that's what caused all my problem was these glued on junk brake bands. So these are the factory ones and I sent them off to have them relined. So after looking at this and thinking about it, <clears throat> I was going to just pull the trigger and order a bunch of new parts, including riveted on brake bands, new drums, and just do this job once and be done with it. But it's a lot of money. Um, I've already got a set of brake bands that I had relined. They're glued on. I'm not happy about that, but I've got them and I don't have to pull the final drives out to do that, to just change these brake bands. So uh, I'm, I'm, I'm still tossing this around. I might just go ahead and throw the brake bands on here and run it and watch it and hope that those, considering they're done in the USA and you know somebody actually put some decent work into them, they're not Chinese crap like that was aftermarket junk, that they might hold up and I can go from there. And if it works, then it's a win. And if it doesn't, then all amounts of time, I guess, in tearing this thing back apart. Because this doesn't cost me any parts right now. It's just labor. And so I think that's what I'm going to do is just slap these new parts on here and cross my fingers that they're going to hold up. So I got all this stuff out of my way. This bolt right here. Whenever you are adjusting your brakes, you would normally, when the dozer's all put together, you can take this cover off. And you get a wrench in there and you tighten that down and that's what tightens your band around the drum to set it. And when you pull the lever, the lever is what squeezes it on there. So I've got to release that and then should be able to reach my hand out in there, unhook that spring and out this band comes. So I kind of got another issue here that I ran into and I forgot about. You see this three quarter inch pipe plug right here? Well, you got to take it out to get this one pin pulled out to replace your band. Uh, I'm studying on it, and I'm thinking that if I just loosen all the tension off the track, I might, might get enough that I could squeeze by that without even splitting the track. But if not, then I've got to split the track just so I can get to that plug. And I would think that surely John Deere was smart enough to let this have enough slack to, that I could do that. So I'm gonna pull the plug on the tensioner on the track and relieve the pressure, and we're gonna see if we can get that out. All right, I got the tension off the track, and I think we're good. I think I can get that out. So that, that there is saving me. Ha, knew it. Looky there, there's Chinese brake pads. That's the whole reason I'm in here and doing this. These cheap pieces of junk fell clear apart. There we go. Here's the brake band out of there. And that's that's my issue. You can see whenever they glued those pads, look where they, that's all they did was run the grinder there like that. So both those ones broke loose. That's why that side over there, it's already fell apart too. It, I'm just lucky it's not like this. It was still kind of working because the pad actually stayed in it. So I'm just telling you now, this drum is toast but I'm still probably just gonna throw those back on it and hope that it works good enough to get me by for now. And uh, later on, I'll have to tear it all apart, put drums and pads and everything on it. I, I don't know what else to do because to split this and tear it all down right now, uh, we're talking at least a grand in parts. There's another part of the brake shoe. Well, there's the old parts out. 
I guess let's get ready and put some new ones in here. That part's in there. So there's the band put back in and onto the thing that it hooks to. I don't know what it's called. Cantilever, something like that. <sighs> so that part's, I mean, that's the real stressful part right there, I guess. Now it's just hooking everything back up. And then we gotta go to the other side. I'm, I'm doing one side at a time so that if I, Screw something up and I need to look over there. Well, I can. So I got to button a few, just a few things up, put the plugs back in it and everything. But this side has the new bands on it. They're changed. It's done. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to finish this out and I'll start on the other side. Again, I have to do my final adjustments after I've got the dozer put together. I'll put these in close. I'll have to look at the book because I forget what it all calls for, but I'll get it where it's supposed to be now. And then I'll leave my inspection plates off for my adjustments. And I'll wait until I'm completely done and have everything back together and adjusted before I put those on. Hey everybody, it's a new day in the shop and we're back on the dozer and today we're going to do this other side. It's going to be a repeat of that side, so I'm probably not going to make you guys watch it. I'll just show you what I got whenever I get it done. So I'd like to point out on all these pins and everything like this that uh, I've been taking out. Um, if you notice, they're actually, they don't have a lot of slop in them. And that's because whenever we redid the clutches the first time, we took and drilled the holes out and, uh, either put bigger pins in where they needed or put a steel sleeve in it and, uh, shimmed it up to where everything got tight again. So all of our linkages were good, including these shift linkages and everything like that. And even down here on those, they were wallered out and we put a plastic bushing over them to tighten those up so that uh, the levers weren't loose anymore. I got this side out and here, here's this pad. It's actually still kind of attached to it, but it's spun clear out of the shoe. It's just barely hanging on there. Some kind of cheap glue. You can see where, like I said before, they just barely touched it with the grinder and it don't even look like they really put glue on it. Just here and there. So these here are those Chinese aftermarket pads from um, brokentractor.com. Uh, don't recommend them at all. They're, they're trash. They're literally trash. Uh, this one here, piece of it broke off and fell apart. So this is the kind of quality you get. 
well there we go i got this side all back together now so uh both sides have my new new brake shoes on here brake band brake shoes whatever in the hell you want to call them uh so there she be i guess at this point i'm gonna put the covers back on you can see how we had them siliconed and the reason we did that the whole reason somebody had to well, that we had to replace the clutches because this thing kept getting water in it and the original clutches seized up. So we tried to seal everything up we could. And in the last pushing two years, you can tell there was not a drop of water inside these. So we did pretty good at that. So that's how I'm going to put her back together. So I'm going to put the big covers on again. I told you I'm going to leave my inspection plates off until I get this all together so I can adjust everything. Uh, I'm going to look at the book real quick and do a quick adjustment. I'll show you what that's going to be here so I can get in here close. So in order to adjust all this, I've got to do a couple things up here first. You've got to pull your pins out of your brake rods and get everything set so your pedal, your brake pedal will actuate both brakes at the same time. So I've got to get those loosened up and you probably won't be able to see me do much of that because it's, it's tough to record, it's tough to get down in there. I've got to do that stuff first and then I will show you what I've got to tighten up in here. Okay, so the first thing you're gonna do is on each side of this, you gotta make sure that this bolt is backed out and not touching. And this here's your clutch op this here's your clutch operation, and this bolt pushes this, which actuates the brake. That's for the brake. So you gotta take all the slack out of that, and then we're going to adjust our free travel and our clutches. And in order to do that, we've got to take up our two inches of free travel, which I usually just put a uh 3 8 bolt underneath this which then which then gives you your two inches see how that's about two inches back from the other one you put about a 3 8 bolt under there and that'll hold you there then you're going to adjust your see how that doesn't move for the two inches the first two inches you've got to adjust that you want your throw out bearing in there on the clutch to just touch at that two inches that's where you or you want it touching at that two inches so this way when you release this back down your throw out bearing is not touching your clutch but at your two inch part it is against your clutch so you are starting to depress your clutch probably not the best person in the world to do explaining like this but if you're watching my video you're probably going to see it Oh, you've got to be kidding me. So the worst part about working by yourself is you just don't have enough hands. And I just dropped a 5 8 wrench down in there. Next, we've got to tighten up our brake band bolt. That bolt that uh, went down through the middle here. And you've got to, when this was off, I could get to it real easy from up here. But uh, you've got to go through your inspection cover on the side to tighten it down. And you're going to, that bolt had saddles on it. I meant to show you guys that. So you've got to tighten it down until it's completely tight with that. Not, not like overkilled. But then you're going to back it off one saddle. And that's where you're going to leave it. I got to catch up to the, I got to get this side caught up to this side. Okay, so I read those directions a little bit wrong but it's okay, I fixed it. 
you got to tighten your brake bands down tight and leave them tight until you tighten these uh, adjustment screws up to touch the brake actuators. And you tighten these up till they just touch. You tighten this bolt up till it just touches this and then tighten your jam nut down. Then after we get that done, then we release our brake band bolt one detent. There we go. That's all the brakes uh, taken care of, changed out, adjusted to where they need to be for the start anyhow. So I'm probably just going to put the camera on time lapse and start putting this thing back together. All right, I got everything buttoned up, hydraulic fluids in it, and I'm gonna go ahead and fire it up. We're gonna take it outside, test everything out, and if it's good to go, I'll bring it back in and pull, bolt all the covers on. It helps when you remember to turn the fuel back on. There we go. I'm pretty pleased with it. It seems to be working good, uh, better than what it ever has, it seems like. So the place that I had my brake bands relined was called Dover Brake in Dover, Ohio. Um, it was around 250 bucks to have them relined. Not hateful. Uh, I highly recommend if you have to do this to a dozer, do not buy these aftermarket pads. They are just, they're absolutely worthless. You can see where this one, the pad just fell off of it and was running into the drum. Eventually, I'm going to have to do this again and put new drums and everything on it. Um, it it's just the way it's going to have to be. I don't want to put the money into it right now. The only reason we went with these aftermarket pads the first time we did this was time. Uh, the aftermarket pads, if you buy them with the clutches and we had them right here, the factory bands would have took the two weeks time to send out and have come back in. And we just didn't want to wait on that. So that's why we went with these and we found out the hard way. Um, if we would have done this right the first time and took the extra time, well, I probably wouldn't be in this boat. As for the rest of this dozer, I'm pretty pleased with it. It's a 50 year old machine. It does what I need to. And... It is what it is. So if you guys like videos like this, go check out the rest of my channel. Thanks for watching. Hey everybody, I'd like to add to the end of this video that I just used the dozer to shove this stuff over the hill. And that these new brakes are like a night and day difference over the fact of when the Chinese brakes were new. These relined brakes are no joke. 
I'm talking just touching the stick and it, it grabs and cuts like it's supposed to. Do not waste your money on those aftermarket pads. Wait the two weeks, three weeks, whatever it takes, and spend the extra money to have your old shoes relined. I promise you will not regret it.